In this video, we're going to answer that gnawing question, do I have childhood trauma? So you don't have to wonder every time that you hear it talked about. If you have that nagging feeling inside that you might have childhood trauma, you probably do. And knowing that is not a bad thing. In fact, knowing is the only way you can do anything about it. I always say that awareness is the first step toward true happiness and inner peace. Today, we're gonna talk about what childhood trauma is, what it means for you, and what to do about it. Another thing we're gonna do is try to take the stigma out of it because that's what makes us wanna avoid learning about it, is that it sounds like this shameful thing, like something's wrong with you. But I assure you, it's not something wrong with you. Childhood trauma is something wrong that happened to or around you that may have negatively affected the way that you view the world and respond to it. So if you want to learn a little bit more, stick with me for the next few minutes as we discuss it. If you're new to the channel or haven't yet had a chance to join this community all about emotional and financial well-being, do that now before we get started. Just click the little red subscribe button and the bell beside it to be notified every time that we release a new video. Also make sure to click like for me so it helps others find it. Childhood trauma has been like this buzzword lately, it seems. But did you know that not too long ago, the word trauma was basically unheard of, at least not in this all-important way. A few years ago, the word trauma was only associated with things like accidents, near-death experiences, war, attacks, rape, and other acutely traumatizing events. Thankfully, a handful of forward-thinking physicians and psychologists began to connect the dots between unexplainable physiological and physical symptoms and childhood trauma. One of those physicians was Dr. Vincent Felitti. As he tells it, it was quite by accident that he came across this discovery. He was working in an obesity clinic and couldn't understand why people were dropping out of the program even though they were successfully losing weight. After doing some investigation, what he discovered was so riveting, it led him to create what is now the well-known Adverse Childhood Experiences study. That was back in the 90s. Since then, entire therapies have been formed around the concept of childhood trauma, and people who would have never had a chance of recovery before are now living the best version of their lives, all thanks to this handful of experts who wanted to help people do more than maintain their symptoms and behavioral issues. So trauma, what exactly is it? Interestingly enough, it's not the event itself that determines whether something is traumatizing or not. It's actually how the person emotionally experiences the event. If an event makes a person feel frightened, disconnected, and or helpless at the time the event occurs, it creates a trauma. When we're children, everything has the potential of being scary, and we're generally helpless at least the first three years. So the risk of being traumatized is pretty high. We can look back on the things that seem traumatic in childhood and think, that wasn't so bad, or wasn't as scary as I thought. But unfortunately, trauma is based on how we process an adverse event when it occurred. How we emotionally perceive the event at the time it happened is what determines whether we were traumatized or not. I think so often we reflect on the negative things that happened to us as children and try to minimize them because those same things wouldn't threaten or harm us now. But again, it's the state of mind that you were in when the adverse experience occurred that determines whether it became a trauma or not. So when we look at it like that, I doubt very many people escaped trauma when they were in childhood. And that in and of itself should permanently destigmatize the term. So why are some people affected by childhood trauma and others aren't? Why do some people seem to move past the adverse things that happened to them in childhood and others remain emotionally arrested? Well, there are several factors at play here, a few of which are how supportive and nurturing your caregivers were, how often you experienced traumas, and the nature and degree of trauma. For example, was a 10-year-old child accidentally locked in a dark room for 10 minutes or intentionally locked in a dark room for 10 hours? Big difference. Having childhood trauma does not mean you are a weak person. It means that you were put in powerless situations by people and conditions that were completely out of your control at the time. And if it happened often, it taught you to disconnect with the parts of self that may have seemed bad or shameful as a result. And to prevent you from being overwhelmed by this experience, your psyche pushed pain and trauma down inside the body to hide it. Then the psyche formed adaptations to help you prevent the trauma from happening again, or at least help you survive it if it was ongoing. An example of that is a child learning to deny needs and feelings if their caregiver is harsh when that child expresses those needs and feelings. Children in abusive homes learn how to walk on eggshells from a very young age. They learn that they have to appease their caregivers to keep from upsetting them. And they also learn that they have to choose between attachment with their caregivers or authenticity, which is just basically your true essence. 
And unfortunately, these adaptations are most often carried into adulthood. And because they're maladaptations, maladaptations just means failure to appropriately or adequately respond to your situation or relationships or environment. Because we have those maladaptations and are also disconnected from self, it causes a lot of problems in our finances and career and education and parenting and health and relationships. And it has compounding effects, meaning it gets worse as we age. I talk more about compounding effects in this video, so I'll put a link in the description. That way, if you wanna go back and watch it at the end, you can. The more we try to bury the pain and trauma inside, the louder it seems to get. And that's because the body was not designed to carry around childhood trauma for a lifetime. So when it seems like we're being triggered more often or our body is starting to have physiological symptoms like pain, illness, and disease, that's just trauma's way of trying to get attention so that resolution and restoration can take place. The mind, body, and soul are always on a mission to return to homeostasis. Homeostasis just means equilibrium or balance between interrelated parts, in this case, mind, body, and soul. The ACEs study done in the 90s covers the 10 most common adverse experiences, but there are others as well, which I covered in this video. ACEs stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences. The negative things that happened to or around us before we were old enough to do anything about them. If you've never had a chance to take the ACE test, I highly encourage you to do that at the end of the video. I put links to both that and the Childhood Emotional Neglect Quiz. The Childhood Emotional Neglect Quiz is especially helpful because many times emotional neglect is very obscure and difficult to corroborate. Not to mention the most common form of emotional neglect, attachment trauma, occurs during the first three years of life, so we wouldn't even have a conscious memory of it. But intrinsic memory is just as debilitating as conscious memory, so even if we can't trace back to emotional neglect, it still affects us the same. The most important thing to know if you determine that you're carrying around childhood trauma is that it affects your everyday life. Every decision that we make is influenced by intrinsic memories and beliefs about ourselves. And if those memories and beliefs were caused by trauma, the effects Will be negative. A lot of times we brush off difficult life experiences or relationships as just bad luck or life is just rough. When really the way life goes is the degree and nature of the trauma that we carry around and the maladaptations that we form to survive it. For example, if we grew up in a toxic home, chances are we'll be attracted to toxic people in our adult lives. It's not a coincidence that people who were raised in abusive or neglectful homes end up in abusive and neglectful adult relationships. As I already mentioned, childhood trauma causes us to believe negative things about ourselves. Many times we learn to ignore feelings and deny ourselves love and care. We're left with unfulfilled needs, which causes us to always be on the hunt for people to love and care for us when really those things are supposed to come from within. So how do we fix it? How do we dissolve these maladaptations and false beliefs about ourselves? If you've watched any of my other videos, you know that I fully believe that trauma-informed therapy is the number one best option for recovery. Working with a therapist who understands how to get to the root issues and not just treat the symptoms like most physicians and psychologists still do. Trauma-informed therapists understand the childhood factors that lead to adult problems. So the first step after establishing trust with the client is to peel back those layers of the onion to help the person exit through the wounds that got them to this point in the first place. Time does not heal all wounds, as the popular yet erroneous saying goes. And you can't just ignore it. As I said earlier, unresolved trauma just gets louder and more aggravating as it ages. It's like a rotten apple. The spoilage just spreads and spreads until it consumes the whole apple. And trauma is the same way. It spreads and grows until it consumes the whole person. That's why the average person with childhood trauma begins to develop illness, disease, anxiety, depression, and multitude of other symptoms in their 30s and 40s. When the trauma is extreme, these things occur even earlier. Studies have shown that even people with significant ACEs die an average of 20 years earlier. So this doesn't only affect how you live, it affects when you die. And the more extreme the childhood trauma, the shorter the lifespan. So if you're someone whose health is suffering or you seem to go from one toxic relationship to the next, or you're never quite able to be financially grounded or secure, or you have difficulty parenting, these are all traits of a person with significant ACEs. 
What if you're completely against therapy? And I know many people are for one reason or another. Maybe it's too stigmatized. Maybe it's financially out of reach. Are there alternatives for those people? There are, and I talked about some of those in this video and also this video. But in all honesty, it's not as easy to recover on your own. Support is often needed to overcome the detrimental effects of childhood trauma. If it's the one thing that you do for yourself, I highly recommend seeking out a trauma-informed therapist in your area or at least on a virtual platform like Zoom. And that's why I always include links to therapist locators in my video descriptions. That way, if someone wants to get started on recovery today, they can. In future videos, we're gonna continue to talk about ways to support healing on your own, steps that you can take to gain awareness and reconnect with your authenticity. So make sure your notifications are turned on so that way I can let you know when I release those. Hopefully you found the information that we discussed today useful and if you did, please give the video a like to help others find it and also be sure to leave me a comment and feel free to ask questions in the comments as well, especially if I didn't fully explain something or I left something hanging. I'd also love to connect with you on social media, so feel free to visit my social media pages. If you're on Facebook, it's Leah Theobald and on Instagram, the page is called Sam Academy. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.